the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Kiak. And if you remember from last week, we are continuing St. Luke's version of the events that leading up to the birth of Christ. And there is a symmetry that happens with St. Luke's writing. Uh, there is Annunciation of St. John. There is Annunciation of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? There is the birth of St. John. There is the birth of Christ. And in the middle, there is a visit of St. Mary to Elizabeth. And so now we are, we've, we've contemplated on the Annunciation of St. John, and today we focus on the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church at its very core, and uh, the very core of its being, the very heart of our faith, um, it, it's the Incarnation, and when the Word took flesh. And the first day that the Word took flesh, the day of the Incarnation, was this day, on the Annunciation, because we believe that life begins at conception. And so the Archangel Gabriel appears to her as St. Mary and tells her that she will give birth to the very Son of God. Realizing that she is not with a man in any such way to bring this about naturally, she says, how will this work out? How is this going to happen? How can this be? She wasn't doubting, but she was trying to understand how this was possible. And so the angel answers her question, and in faith and humility she responds, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45, we hear the righteous St. Elizabeth say to St. Mary, Blessed is she that believed. Blessed is she that believed. Greater than Sarah greater than Zacharias. See, Sarah didn't believe. And not believing that promise of Abraham was going to be fulfilled through her. She had given her servant Hagar to Abraham to conceive a child, and thus Ishmael was born. When the angel spoke and she heard the words of the angel, she didn't believe. She actually laughed. She actually laughed. Zacharias didn't believe even though he had the example of Sarah, even though the archangel Gabriel had already told him how the child would be conceived, and even though the archangel Gabriel himself was a heavenly sign of what was to be promised. When is the last time that we ever had an angel show up from heaven to deliver a message to us personally? I know it hasn't happened to me. And Zacharias questioned the words of the angel and was struck mute. Mary believed. St. Mary believed. The angel had not yet told her how his promise would be fulfilled. And so she asked about details. But she believed the promise nonetheless. And then St. Elizabeth said, Blessed is she that believed. And we look at her response. St. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. It's an amazing response. She didn't laugh like Sarah virgins, can't conceive a child. That's crazy talk. There was no laughter. There was no mocking. There was no lack of faith. She didn't doubt the miracle. She didn't doubt this promise of the angel and ask for some sign above and beyond the appearance of the angel himself. She didn't do like Sarah and seek some worldly way according to the ways of men to bring it about. She didn't go to sleep with some man to make conception happen the expected way. She didn't complain about the sorrow and the pain and the suffering and the ridicule that she herself would endure because of that miracle that would take place through her. Far too many people underestimate just what she was saying when she said, let it be to me according to your word. Not 50 years ago in this country, in America, to be a teenager, not yet married, and to show up pregnant was a big deal. To be ridiculed, to be cast out, shame. In this culture, in this context, 2,000 years ago, all of that was true and more, if you can believe it. According to the law, a fornicator, an adulteress, should be stoned to death. 
Notice the angel gave her no promise of deliverance. For all she knew, she was welcoming the death penalty. Knowing that she was pure. Knowing that she was innocent. And knowing that the angel had appeared to her alone and no one else and nobody could believe her story. A virgin birth. Yeah, right. What do you mean? She knew the culture that she lived in. She knew the circumstances. She didn't whine. She didn't complain. She didn't say, could you please at least show some other people signs from God? Or let the angels show up to other people so that everybody knows that this is really a virgin birth? The angel promised her none of those things. And she requested none of those things. And in full trust and submission to the will of God, she says, let it be to me according to your word. Let it be according to your word, even if for the next 2,000 years, large groups of people will call me names. Isn't that shocking? To this day, there are some religious groups that reject Christ and St. Mary, and they believe that she's an unclean woman. And the word that they use for Christ, I can't even say it. It's blasphemy. It's filthy. And yet, this is the type of ridicule to which she willingly subjected herself to when she said, let it be to me according to your word. Nobody else may believe that this is a virgin birth, but I know that it is. And God knows that it is. And that's enough. She wasn't seeking the praise of men. She was seeking the praise of God and God alone. When Zacharias had responded in unbelief, he was struck mute, unable to speak. St. Mary responds in belief. And Elizabeth blessed her for her believing. St. Mary's tongue was filled with the praises of God because she spoke the prayer that was immortalized. St. Mary was believing, and St. Mary humbly accepted her response. She is indeed the highly favored one. St. Mary is faithful and obedient. After the archangel explains how our Lord Jesus Christ will be divinely conceived within her womb, she replies, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Handmaiden in the original Greek is translated slave. So she places herself completely under the direction and authority of God. St. Mary says, let it be to me according to your word. We know her yes to God implies her utter free response to God, her free choice. She could have said no. But St. Mary said yes. And it's her yes to God that's the beginning of our salvation. What if she said no? What if? Could she have said no? You might say that, of course she couldn't. Of course St. Mary couldn't say no. She was far too holy. But we have to be careful. There's a trap in that sort of thinking. If we're not careful, this turns St. Mary from a free human being into a sanctified robot. We have to be careful. The whole glory of the Annunciation is that St. Mary, the second Eve, could have said no. But she said yes instead. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we praise her for, and rightly so. This sentimental view is very dangerous. If we believe that the most important decision in the history of the world was in fact inevitable. That it couldn't have happened otherwise. Then that means it was effortless. Now, now if we believe in that, that train of thought, then we have a beautiful excuse for laziness. Next time we're faced with a tough moral decision, we shouldn't worry about doing what's right. We can just drift and go through the motions and God will make sure that whatever choice that we make is going to be the right one. 
No, if God really wants us to do something, he's going to sweep us off our feet the way that he did with St. Mary. And if he chooses not to, it's not our fault. No, St. Mary could have said no. But what if she had? She couldn't just go. God couldn't have just gone and just asked someone else like some sort of a charity collector. With all the genealogies and all the prophecies in the Bible, there was only one candidate. It's an amazing thought if you really think about that. Ultimately, of course, God would have done something. The history of salvation is the history of him who never abandoned his people, however stubborn we are. So God has chosen to work through human history. And if the first attempt at redemption took thousands of years to prepare, from the fall to the Annunciation, how many more of tens of thousands of years would it have taken for the next attempt to take, to take place? Faced with this enormity of her choice, how was St. Mary able to decide? If she said no, then unredeemed generations of people would toil under the burden of sin. If she said yes, then she herself would suffer, and so would her son, but both would be glorified. Millions of people not even yet born would have heaven open up to them. But millions of others would suffer under oppression and death in her son's name. The stakes are almost infinite, right? You might say that St. Mary didn't worry about all this. She just obeyed God. But I don't believe that. What God wanted was not St. Mary's unthinking obedience, but her full informed consent as representative of the human race. The two greatest miracles of the Annunciation is this, that God gave St. Mary the wisdom to know the consequences of her decision, and that he gave her the grace not to be overwhelmed by that knowledge. There are times in the Christian life when he or she must either say yes or no. They are, they are two simple words, but they hold within them amazing possibilities. They are very, very powerful words. Today, we celebrate yes. And we remember that we all suffered the result of an ancient no. The Virgin St. Mary said yes to the will of God, and our ancestors, Adam and Eve, said no to the command of God. And this act of rebellion against God and one of his commandments did not hurt God. It did not add or take away from God himself. He had no need of our obedience to him. And this no did not take anything from God, but it took everything away from us. What was taken away from us by the act of a no could only be returned to us by our powerful act of yes. The most important of these yeses is of the Virgin St. Mary and to the Archangel Gabriel's message to her. We might say to ourselves, what's the big deal? She was being honored by God. What's so difficult about that? What was the burden? She would be pregnant without a husband. She had just been betrothed to the elderly St. Joseph. We were reflecting on this in the last servant meeting with the Buna Timothy. And St. Joseph had just taken her under his wings as a father figure. And now she would accept to become pregnant. In the days of the Virgin St. Mary, like I mentioned before, it was often the case that a woman who was found pregnant out of wedlock might be stoned and killed. This was considered a great offense because it was against the law of Moses. Her yes to God might have meant her life. 
later on, her yes meant that she was displaced from her home. She was hunted along with her beloved son. It meant that she would live for years as a refugee and an alien in a strange land of Egypt. Sometimes, sometimes saying yes means suffering greatly for the name of Christ. Thousands of martyrs of our holy church remind us that oftentimes our yes to God is kind of like a death sentence. When our heroic men and women and children were asked if they would worship idols, they said no. When they asked to deny their faith in Christ, they said no. And when they were asked to affirm their beliefs, they said yes to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. They took this all the way through the sufferings and the tortures, even to death. In fact, it is this faith that confirms that Christianity alone is true because the holy disciples suffered and were murdered for their belief, for their yes in the risen Lord. They would only choose to say yes to suffer if it was true, if they strongly believed that it was true. We have come a time in our country where we better be ready to say yes. We have to also be ready to say no when it matters. We have come to a time when we need to be prepared to give an answer when it's increasingly inconvenient to do so. And when we are increasingly risking our way of life and our jobs and our reputations to do it. There are many examples of this. We should say no to the promotion of sexuality and all the ways that has twisted our culture. It's bad. It's very bad. We should be very careful about what our kids are interacting with on devices. We should be monitoring. We should say no to sacrificing everything, including our families, for success and wealth and quote-unquote freedom. We should say no to endless distractions from a life of prayer. We should say no to endless excuses that keep us away from the church. We should say no when we are faced with a coworker or a classmate that uses the, the name of Christ in vain. We should say no when we are told to compromise our values and our morals to do our work. We should say yes to everyone who asks us if we believe in God. We should say yes to loving everyone around us, no matter their political or whatever their worldview is. We should say yes Jesus Christ is the only way to truly know God. We should say, we should live as if we really believe it. We should say yes and acknowledge God daily, no matter what it might cost us. The Virgin Mary, St. Saint, uh, Mary, her yes was done selflessly and a great risk to herself and even to her child. But this yes made it possible for our Lord Jesus Christ to become a man and to say yes to his Father and to go to the cross for us. This selfless yes, which led to his death, becomes our only hope in life. His yes became a universal yes for all of humanity. So to conclude, one woman said no to God and yes to herself. The other reserves the course, reversed the course of nature by reversing the response of humanity. She said yes to God and no to herself. The secret that becomes evident in her life and the life of everyone who says yes to God is that when we say yes to him and allow him to do his will in our lives, we are not saying no to ourselves at all. 
In fact, we are finally living up to the purpose for which we were created. We become exalted by God to a very high state, and this is more true than with St. Mary. God exalted her because she humbled herself and was obedient. She said yes to him. What about each one of us? How will we answer this high calling that's put before us? May God give each one of us a good answer to the glory of his name. And glory be to God forever.